Do you see what I just did there? I chose some juicy summer vibes, Latino music, to get us all into the good spirit. <laughs> As you can see, I have this beautiful shell, which I think is called a Nautilus. Correct me if I'm wrong. A friend of mine asked me to do a pendant for her, and of course I said yes. So we need to make a silicone mould. First up, we are going to need to create a base to hold the silicone. I'm going to use these Lego pieces to make my structure. That way, I can make it as big and as deep as I want. You need to make sure to leave some space around the shell or whichever object you want to make. Ever stepped on a Lego piece? It's painful. Avoid. <laughs> Once we have the desired structure, it's time to give it another extra non-seep-through protection. And for that, I'll be using tape. Cut out pieces of tape and add them into the inside of your structure, making sure to overlap them. Also, don't forget the corners. Next up, we want to make a base. So I'm using more tape and leaving the sticky side up. Place your object inside smack in the middle. Now it's time to prepare the silicone. My favourite silicone is from Let's Resin, but I've run out, so I'm going to use this one. I bought this one on Amazon. Make sure to check the ratio you need. This one in particular is a one-to-one -one by weight. I'm going to use my timer and stir the silicone for four minutes. Okay, not bad. It has a pretty low viscosity, which is ace, especially to avoid painful wrists. Hopefully this silicone can be my number two, as it's hard for me to get Let's Resin. Pour in the silicone and remember to tap it to help release any trapped bubbles. Then leave it to cure. This little guy is ready and it's time to demold. First up, I'm taking off the tape so that I can push the mold out. And it came out perfect. With all its detail, I'm very happy with it. So far, so good. Next up, my favourite part, colour. I'm going to use some abalone shells and I think two types of greens will look stunning. For this part, we are going to use UV resin and I'll be using the Apex UV resin, which I absolutely love. I will leave everything I use and the discount codes in the description box below. I'm adding about 5 millimeters of Apex UV resin to the mold. I'm running out of this stuff. Yikes. Use a disposable micro brush to eliminate any bubbles. Now you'll need to use some tweezers to help you place the abalone shells into the mold. I'll be alternating the greens. If you have a wax pencil, fantastic, as it will help you pick up the shards. My tweezers are naff, and the shards keep shooting off. Just relax and enjoy the process.
Once you've completely covered the area, place it under your UV lamp to cure. For the backing, I'm going to use Let's Resin Intense Chameleon Pigments in green and blue. These colours are beautiful. I'm using a soft blending brush to sprinkle both colours into the mould. As the abalone shells have a hint of blue, I wanted both colours. A small amount goes a long way. I've also decided to dust the sides of the mould too. Tap off any excess you might have. I'll be using black polyurethane from Artis Spray. It's a one-to-one -one by volume or weight. You can use normal resin with black pigments, but for the purpose of the video, I wanted to do this fast as I have two more I want to do. I like to prepare this stuff into two different pots because this stuff cures fast and knowing my luck, my doorbell will ring. You only need to stir it for about 20 seconds, then pour it straight into the mould. I'm not going to fill it up to the top as I don't want this piece to be too thick. Tap the mould to eliminate any trapped bubbles and let it cure for about an hour. It's ready to demould and I absolutely love how it's come out. What do you think? Because we didn't fill it up to the top, it has sharp edges. Therefore, with a debearing tool or a scalpel, eliminate those edges. I love my Duster Buster. It's fantastic to clean up your work area. I want to dome this little guy. This is completely optional. I'm using my Apex UV resin and a micro brush. I really like this UV resin because it glides ever so well. Then cure it under your UV lamp. Next up, it's time to mount everything and turn it into a beautiful pendant. You'll need a chain or some forked leather like I'm using here. I want this pendant to be hanging quite low. Therefore, I need the chain to be pretty long. You'll also need some fasteners. Use plies to squeeze the fasteners down tight, preferably without gloves on. Attach both ends of the chain to the fasteners. Now you need to drill a hole where you want your clip to be and then add your clip. And at last but not least, Thread your chain through the clip area and there you have a pendant. For this next pendant, I'll be using Lightwish Color UV Resin. I made a little color tester so I could see the colors I wanted faster. I want this to be colorful and happy. To help me along with each colour, I'm using a UV torch to cure as I go along. That way, I avoid the colours mixing. These colours are absolutely gorgeous. Make sure to give it a quick zap under your lamp to cure completely.
I'm adding a small layer of Apex UV resin and then I cured it. I'm not sure why I did this. Ah yes, I remember. It was to make sure the polyurethane didn't seep under. For this one, I've decided to go for a white polyurethane from Let's Resin. It's the same method as before, but I'm using smaller cups and my new mini stirring sticks. They're so cute. Pour the resin into the mould and watch the magic happen. Don't forget to hit the boop like button and subscribe if you haven't already.